Hey, it's Leisha from Caught by Design. Today, I'd like to show you a little bit about the drawing tools in Silhouette Studio. Now, technically, everything here on the left-hand side of your screen is a drawing tool. But when I think of drawing tools, I think of the shape tools, like the Draw a Rectangle tool, or the Line tool, or the Freehand tool. And that's what we are going to concentrate on today. But before we get started with that, there's a really important step you need to take first, and that is to look at your preferences. To open the Preferences pane, you can use the Edit menu, the gear icon at the bottom right of your screen, or the shortcut, which is Command plus K on a Mac or Control plus K on a PC. If you click on Tools, you'll see that the first option is After Creating a Shape. And here you have two choices, Choose Select or Continue Drawing Shapes. Now let me show you what will happen if we have uh, Choose Select. So I've drawn a rounded rectangle, and then you'll see that my uh, mouse goes back to the Selection button. And then I have to go back to select a shape before I can draw any more shapes. If I just click down, nothing happens but a, bo a bounding box. However, if I go into the Preferences and change that to Continue Drawing Shapes, then when I draw a shape, and then click down it, I can draw the same shape again. The selection stays with the drawing a shape. So it's really just whatever works for you. Most of the time I keep mine on choose select, but for the first part of this demo I'm going to use the continue drawing shapes preference. So let's start out with the draw a rectangle tool. That is the first one in the row of icons there on the flyout menu. And the shortcut for it is just to press R on your keyboard. So when I select that and just click and drag my mouse, I'll get a rectangle. I can go, you know, tall, wide, how, whatever shape I want. But if I hold on my shift key and drag, I'll get a perfect square. Now watch what happens if I press the Alt key, or on a Mac, it's the Option key. The cursor becomes more of a center point, and the shape draws outward from there, rather than just being drawn kind of along the path that I'm dragging when I'm not pressing down the Alt or Option key. Okay, now let's go to the rounded rectangle. The shortcut for that is Shift plus R, and it works pretty much the same way that the square works in that you can make it wide, narrow, or hold down the Shift key and make a perfect square. The difference is these little control points. They can be adjusted individually or proportionately. If you click on one and drag it, it will adjust the four corners based just on that control point. But if you hold down your shift key and click on one of them, you will adjust the corners proportionately. Now even if you've already adjusted one corner by itself, or one control point, Holding down the shift key will kind of snap that point back and the corners will adjust proportionately. Just as with the draw a rectangle tool, holding down the option or alt key means that the shape will grow out from the center point of the cursor rather than being drawn along the path that you are dragging. Next up is the Draw an Ellipse tool. It is the third icon over, and the shortcut for it is E on the keyboard. So you can draw ovals, again, narrow, wide, or hold down your Shift key and draw a perfect circle. 
as with the other shapes, holding down the Alt or Option key means that the shape will be drawn kind of outward from the cursor point, as opposed to when you just click and drag. The last shape tool is the Draw a Regular Polygon tool. Now before I demonstrate that, I want to switch my preferences back to where after creating a shape, I choose Select. The shortcut for drawing a regular polygon is Shift plus P. The default is a five-sided polygon or a pentagon, but you can adjust the number of sides with this little slider right here. I'm going to zoom in so we can see it just a little bit better. You can go all the way down to 3 or as high as 60. Once you get to 60, it almost looks like a circle, but there are some sides to it if you really zoom in. Holding down the Option or Alt key when drawing a polygon works differently than with the other shapes. So see if I'm not holding down that key and I just click and drag, the shape doesn't snap to anything. But if I hold down the Option key, the side will snap to either a horizontal or vertical line depending on which way I drag my mouse. And you'll see as I move my mouse kind of in a circular fashion, that side will continue snapping to a horizontal or vertical line. As opposed to when I move it in a circular fashion, not holding down the Alt or Option key, it rotates freely. Now let's have a little more fun with the shapes by editing the points. I'll start out by drawing a rectangle and then double clicking on it, which will enter point editing mode, showing the gray nodes. You can click and drag to adjust those nodes or add additional nodes just by clicking anywhere on the line. You can pull them in, out, delete them, whatever you want to do to create your desired shape. However, with the rounded rectangle, when you draw it and double click on it, nothing happens. The first thing you have to do before you can adjust the points on a rounded rectangle is convert it to a path. Then when you double click on it, you'll see those nodes. The ellipse works the same as the rectangle. But then the polygon works like the uh, rounded rectangle. You have to first convert it to a path before you can make any adjustment to the points. Now let's move on to the line drawing tools. For a regular line, if you just select it, either by clicking on the icon or using the keyboard shortcut, which is a backslash, 
and you just click and drag, you'll draw a line, just any direction you want to go. Holding down the shift key, however, will let you draw a straight line, either a horizontal straight line, a vertical straight line, or a straight line at a 45 degree angle. Using the line tools, you can also draw an irregular polygon with sides of varying lengths. So to use it, you select that tool, click down in your workspace, drag the mouse, click, drag again, click, and continue that until you're finished with your shape. You can either create a closed polygon by connecting the starting and end points. Those bright red dots will kind of uh, act as magnets toward one another. Or you can create an uh, open polygon. And to do that, when you get to the end, you just double click and you will stop drawing the polygon. The curved shape tool works in the same way, except instead of having an angle at each point where you click on the mouse, you'll have a nice curve. Again, you can close it by connecting the beginning and ending points. Or you can just draw a curved line. When you get to the end of your desired shape, just double click and the line drawing will stop. The last of the line drawing tools creates an arc. To use the tool, select it first, click in the workspace and drag your mouse to where you want the beginning of the arc, click again, drag to where you want the ending of the arc to be, and then click to end the arc shape. The angle will snap at common measurements such as 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 135 degrees, 180 degrees, and so on. Once you have the arc drawn, you use this slider button to change the size of the arc but keep the angle consistent or click on one of the control points to change the angle measurement. The keyboard shortcuts for these tools are P, for the angled polygon, C for the curved shape, or Shift plus A for the arc. The final tools we're going to talk about are the freehand tools. You have two choices here. One is just a freehand drawing tool, which if you double click on it to look at the point, you'll see that it's pretty choppy. Or the smooth freehand drawing tool which gives you a lot less control, but also gives you many less nodes, so you'll have a better cutting experience. I hope you found this helpful and that you'll be encouraged to use some of these drawing tools to create your own designs. Thanks for watching!